I'm in a big subdivided three at the beginning. There are very few pieces of music. I don't. I could only name probably a few that when that opening, that opening sound hits you, that you feel the force of the sound. It's almost like a G force hitting you. There's going to be 160 singers. There's going to be a 50 to 60 piece orchestra in the pit. Singers are going to be on the stage as a backdrop. So the sound is going to come pouring out of the audience. And in the middle of it is going to be this dance that's created. With the, the iconic O Fortuna, the opening number, um, I've created this sweep of movement that, that really does match the volume of the sound. So we'd like for this to... There. You just hold it until I see the whites of your eyes. I cut you off. <laughs> this, this is maybe the most visceral, uh, rhythmic piece of music I know. That first sound, that first beat too, it's pop. The sound comes right at me, and it's a pure O vowel sound. It's not a wind up to the southern O. O. Three and one. See, Orff was a, was a music student and a, and a promising conductor, promising composer. In 1935 and 36, he was working on this, this Carmina Brana, the perception of this piece. You sound a little bit like um, <laughs> mice there, lady. Ooh, almost like an owl. If an owl were singing this, this would be the sound. Ready? Again, right there. It was premiered in 1937. And it was so sensational then because it involved what he considered was the most important things, melody and rhythm, with rhythm being the primary element. Okay, let's go movement by movement. I tried very hard not to develop an absolute narrative through line. Each of the movements is based on some translated uh, text. Hang on to it. Good. And again, I did not want to do an absolute Very translation nice. or reaction to the, the actual um, text. Rip out your heart. No. Yes. One, two, three, four. One. Yes. One, two, three, one, two, three, go, 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 go. Two, three, don't do the extra quarter bra. Go, go. Go, 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 go. Now stay in your lines. All right, much better, you guys. And then when it gets the, it kind of, she kind of swoops down in this one section and then they lift her back up there. Now, what constitutes the lyrics were really uh, discovered in, in 1803. I don't think I can say all those words, but I am here in Hocus Pocus. <laughs> and published in 1847. What are those words? Hocus Opus. Hocus Opus. And they were found in a monastery in, in Bavaria. Almost. And they are sung predominantly in medieval Latin, but also they have some old German in there and some in French, so the language is varied too. Watch each other, and two. It is one of these lifetime experiences. There's few pieces that can grab you like this piece of music. Certainly, I think that the dancers have given me their blood and are ready to get out there and give 3,000%. It is designed to be captivating, but it's also designed to be almost overpowering and overwhelming. Put your seatbelt on before you listen. <laughs>